Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Roam Overlanding. Today we're at the Terrain Tamer Africa HQ in Cape Town, South Africa, and we are going to be doing something very cool with the Hilux. You guys know I changed the Terrain Tamer suspension quite a while ago and have been thoroughly enjoying it. I've been using the parabolic leaf springs in the rear, we've got the smart coils up front, and we've been using the HD shock absorbers, and they have performed incredibly well. But we want to kind of take that to the next level and we want to test what Terrain Tamer has on offer in their Pro Shock series. Now these are remote reservoir shock absorbers that we're going to actually be installing on this vehicle and they are adjustable. Now that's fantastic for me with this vehicle, um, you know, running all sorts of different varied weights, traveling over varied terrains and all of those things across Southern Africa. So it's really nice to be able to have that bit of adjustability that I can tweak it to really settle the vehicle beautifully to match the terrain that I'm on. So I hope you guys are gonna join in and watch us install the new suspension. We're gonna take the suspension out for a bit and give you a couple of first impressions, play with that adjustability on the shock absorbers and see how much of an impact does that actually have on the vehicle handling and the dynamics. So join us. So you think the steering stuff's out? It's not just, it's done its duty. It's done, it's, it's, it's done what it needs to do. Yeah. So it's feeling a bit wobbly, so... So basically this is one of the front shock absorbers and you can actually see you've got your remote reservoir here. There's a bracket over there and this would actually mount somewhere on the chassis or whatever. This is a bit upside down at the moment. So it kind of looked like this. You'd have your coil on the top here and then this would mount over there. So you can actually then easily go and adjust. It's got a nice big knob. You've got eight different settings that you can kind of set your compression up on, so you can go from a soft to a firmer ride, and then you're gonna adjust this based off of the kind of the weight on your vehicle. So if you are running a heavier setup, say let's say on the rear, you're fully loaded for a trip or whatever, and you're driving on a tar road, you might wanna firm it up a bit. Um, and then once you hit the gravel, you might wanna soften it up a little bit just to you know make it a bit nicer on the gravel. But then if you're doing slower speed, kind of rock crawling or something like that, you might then want to take it up again so that you're constantly keeping the wheel on the ground, you're keeping traction as you're going and it'll help limit the body roll and stuff of the vehicle as well when you're loaded up. So it's just nice to be able to have that stuff. I have a feeling that once you kind of get, in, get the hang of it, you get the hang of your vehicle, you, get, you know which settings you like to favor, you know that okay when I'm fully loaded for a trip like let's say to Namibia or something, I'm running a certain weight in the vehicle then you know, okay, when I hit the gravel road, I like to use um, setting three or four, okay? Then you know when you get to the tar, you might take it up again. But the whole time you're also adjusting your tire pressures. So you're gonna get out your vehicle, you're gonna adjust your tire pressures, you're gonna change your shock settings, and then you're gonna go. So it's a nice thing to kind of do at the same time, especially if it's nice and accessible like that, where you can just easily change, you know, the compression of the shock absorbers, and then you can get in and go, and you know that you're always trying to get the best possible ride. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at kind of a bit of the construction of a twin tube versus a monotube like this and Marinus will kind of kind of run us through some of the differences and some of the things that you'd expect from going to like a pro setup like this. I can see that the quality of these is very very good um, so it'll be interesting to kind of see a side by side even once we've pulled the ones out of my vehicle and we put them next to these and we can kind of see some of the differences in the bore size and you know the kind of total construction and the actual mechanism that the shock absorber works. 
So a ProShock is, is a monotube shock. So the tube that you see on the outside, that's basically your piston is running inside that tube. So basically this tube where your piston is running on the inside. Where with a normal shock, it's a twin tube, you've got a tube running inside of another tube. Mm -hmm. So basically what happens if you, you, uh, you've got your compression tube, so your piston when the shock goes down, it compresses the oil and it runs through this valving on the, um, on the shaft here. Yes. And it forces the oil through the, the valve at the bottom here. And then when it rebounds, the oil needs to flow back through this valving at the bottom here. And um, that's basically how it ad absorbs the, um, the shock and everything um, inside. And then this is what you call your expansion tube. So the, the rod pushing in into the um, compression tube and the oil flowing this side, it basically you've got uh, oil on the, in, in the expansion tube and this oil moves up and down basically due to the volume yes. of the shaft. Okay. And then you've got a gas under pressure okay. on the inside here to okay. assist with the cavitation, basically the, the mm. boiling of the oil. Yes. Now with your pro shock, you don't have the external tube. Your external tube is basically being replaced by the remote reservoir. So actually now instead of having this little gap all the way around the whole kind of length of the shock, yeah. or half the length of the shock, you actually now have an entire Reservoir. Basically, your shock is a. Um, it transfers energy that it, it basically absorbs. It changes that into heat. So your oil is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And to get rid of that, it basically needs to escape into the atmosphere. Yeah. So with your pro shock or the monotube, basically the oil is contacting the metal on the outside of the shock, and the heat can disperse a lot easier. But with your twi uh, twin tube, it's a cheaper way to manufacture. That's what why most of the guys use this. The heat needs to flow through your compression tube, through the oil, through okay. the external expansion tube, and then because the oil is only a certain level here, mm. and the oil transfers the, the heat a bit, a bit better because it's the, the oil also heating up, you basically only have a that very small good. area oh, on this side. So your sense. heat yeah. disperses a lot easier with your, your pro shocks or mm. your monotube shocks. That makes so, total sense. So basically putting the oil under pressure, it assists with preventing the oil creating bubbles on the inside. It's like water cooking at a higher temperature at sea level than in Johannesburg. Yes. Yeah, you, you just put the oil under a lot more pressure. So due to the manufacturing and, and all of that, it's very difficult to get the pressure that you can put in your pro shock into a twin tube shock. We work with 150 PSI where it's a lot low, lower in, in your twin tubes. What is inside there that's adjusting? Is it different shims? It's, it's, it's shims, basi okay. basically the valving. So you can make it so. softer and harder okay. and, and yeah. so on. So, yeah. so for you, I, I, it will be interesting to see mm. what your feedback will be. Yeah, I think Nikki is um, pretty much done with getting the old stuff out. So maybe let's head over there and we can see yeah. everything going on. Are we progressing? Awesome. Yeah. Sure. We actually went through, we've swapped the coils from my old shocks onto the new ones. That's all done and done nicely. But while we were away, Nikki was continuing to work on the suspension and everything. And basically all my steering stuff is absolutely buggered. Lower control arms, the bushings are buggered. The cost uh, correction is buggered. It's, it's a bit of a nightmare. So we are gonna have to swap everything. A Little bit of extra stuff on there, but in the long term, it's gonna really help with just overall safety and handling of the vehicle and the longevity out of the new suspension. So it's gonna be worth it. This is not good. This is not, look how disgusting this is. This is, this was to do my wheel alignment. That's, and this actually holds on the entire lower control arm. And the bushings are not great. These are not great. It's all gonna to have to get replaced. Uh, and it's just going to end up putting more strain on everything else and we're not going to be able to align the wheels properly and do all of that stuff so it's time look how it's correct see you don't see that look here oh yeah it's correct right around I'm literally just um, opening these up to look at the shiny bits Ooh, very nice. You got a, a little seal in there to prevent water and things going in there. Yeah, I see that. That's nice. Yeah, that one doesn't have that at all. No. I mean, the fact that you can just move it around like that is 
Okay, so now we know why they put a seal on it, because... Prevent yeah. dirt and water getting in there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this thing, you can't even move this thing at all. <laughs> yeah, no, that feels like that's the right amount of resistance for a vehicle, <laughs> and this is like the right amount of resistance for a joystick on a radio control car. Nikki has been hard at work getting these bushings out and there is a massive amount of corrosion and everything in here. So we're going to have to get in there, clean these out before we put in the new bushings. And yeah, it is, uh, you can tell it's a 4x4. You can tell it's lived a life as a 4x4 rental vehicle. Um, I do think most of the stuff was probably actually there when I got the vehicle. But people don't often really look at this type of stuff when you're doing your suspension install. Um, you know, I think for Terrain Tamer, they have a solution to the problem. They can resolve these things if there is a problem. I think for a lot of places where you go and you do your suspension upgrade, they don't really want to look too far um, because it, it's a lot of work to do this type of stuff. But maybe it's worth, you know, going out of your way and asking them to please, you know, if you're doing a suspension upgrade, check the steering components. Check the, the rest of the suspension components, not just the shiny stuff, you know, not just the fun stuff. But sometimes you've got to work on the stuff that's kind of pretty important for your safety and that, but it might not be so glamorous. We don't all want to spend thousands of rand changing, you know, bushings and <laughs> steering rack components and tie rod ends and things like that. But sometimes it's necessary. So my vehicle is at 120,000 kilometers. It's done mainly overlanding. And this is the kind of side effects of that going through water, going through sand, driving in the dunes, driving on, you know, rocky terrain, you abuse your vehicle. And it means you need to sometimes take extra precautions and you need to do some extra maintenance. And this is kind of what that looks like. I'm very fortunate to have Terrain Tamer here helping me with this stuff. Um, so, you know, they've skilled, they know what they're doing. They've got the components and stuff here to actually be able to help out with that. So that helps big time. But for the average person who's out there, you need to, you know, speak to Terrain Tamer. They can maybe help you find a service center that can actually help you with type, these type of things. They don't actually do this type of mechanical work themselves, but they are completely clued up with everything and they can hook you up with people who can help you with your vehicles. So we've got a little bit more to do on these. We've got to then do the other side and then we can start reassembling the front steering stuff and then we can actually get the shock absorbers in. Goodness. Okay, well, here we go. Let's go eight. <laughs> I can't. I can't push it down. All right. Put it back to one. Holy camoli. Okay, back on one. I've got superhuman strength again, but it's still wow. But it's it, the way it springs back. It's because of that pressure behind. It like it just. Okay. Okay. So that's the install pretty much done and dusted. The last step now is getting the wheel alignment done and then it's actually getting out on some of the gravel and just giving it a test. See how it handles in the corrugation. See what happens when we tweak and tune the suspension and you know, see how it alters the ride of the vehicle. 
I have a feeling what's going to happen is we're going to probably end up getting a uh, off-road setting, an on-road setting, and a light and heavy setting of the vehicle. And that will only develop over time the more I use it and stuff like that. So I'm very excited to get out there and use it. I think the work that Nikki has done here on the vehicle with rebuilding the front of the you know, the steering rack and all that stuff, I think that's going to make a huge difference as well to the handling of the vehicle. So all in all, I'm very grateful for the assistance from Terrain Tamer. It's going to be a huge, huge improvement to the vehicle over our next exciting trip. So you guys will hear a little bit of update and stuff like that as I'm going through on my experience with the suspension and how everything is going down while I'm on the trip. And yeah, anyways, we're going to go and get this vehicle out on the trail and start testing it. So we've sorted out the wheel alignment on the vehicle after doing the suspension upgrade and Andy and I are back in the Hilux and we are on to our next adventure. We've been playing around with the settings a little bit and I'm definitely feeling a lot less body roll going around corners. The suspension reacts much faster to bumps and things like that and it's driving really nicely at the moment. So I'm keen to get it on a bit of gravel and see how that goes, see how it feels out there. And uh, I think we're going to head through to Kakakama. It's a beautiful spot. I love it out there. We can do a bit of 4x4ing. We can do some gravel roads and really test the suspension out. So we'll give you feedback on the next coming episodes and all that stuff as we continue traveling on our next adventure. We're going to be traveling for the next around 25 to 30 days. And um, yeah, we'll take you guys along. So remember to subscribe, like, and comment down below. And let us know what you think of the difference between the HD and the Terrain Tamer Pro Shocks. Um, do you think that's something that you'd like to put on your vehicle? Do you think you know it's, it warrants the difference? And um, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next adventure. Cheers.